Hello and welcome to another episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast. Today's guest is Christina McDonald, a Geotechnical Project Manager at Keller in Akron, Ohio. We're going to be talking about the work that she's doing there and also with an organization called NAWIC to provide opportunities for women to work in construction and to also provide opportunities for the field of construction to just be more inclusive. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the mentoring opportunities that she's been a part of, some of those initiatives, and we're also going to talk about some of the work she's been doing to increase the number of STEAM professionals, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, to be successful in construction. So we're going to cover a lot of ground, really focusing in on construction and the state of construction and construction culture and how we can improve that. Uh, this is not an episode you want to miss. Uh, I'm your host, Jared Green, and this is the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast. And with that, let's get right into today's episode. Before we dive in, we'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE and PE exams the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE and PE exam prep. Now let's dive into today's episode. All right. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I was looking forward to having you on the show, Christina, and kind of hearing more about your stories. So uh, thank you for carving out some time for us. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So let's set the stage. Can you share a little bit about your journey? Uh, I understand you started by studying ge ge geology engineering. I've heard of yeah. geologic engineering. So it's geology engineering, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you studied that at the University of Akron, and now you're a geotechnical project manager at Keller in Cleveland, Ohio. Tell us a little bit more about that journey and also what inspired you to pursue this career path. Yeah, so I, I went to college. Um, I really did not know what I was going to kind of do and what career path I was going to have. Um, I went with what was familiar and what I enjoy, which was being outdoors, traveling, hiking. Um, so I started with the geology route. Um, obviously, like thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, but I wanted to add something a little bit more to make me a little more competitive in the marketplace um, while getting a job. So um, I tagged and made it like a dual major so it was geology engineering so it was kind of a half civil and half geology degree um so that was really cool it transitioned me um when i graduated into the oil and gas industry um so that was kind of like a wild culture shock um right out of college uh really cool experience um, but it was uh, like I was there for probably a year and a half, did a lot of drilling. I was on the I lived on the oil rigs wow. um, and then did a little bit of geo steering, uh, but also side the saw the fracking side of it as well. Um, but that opportunity um, led me to the construction industry because of that drilling experience. Um, there was a local uh, general contractor that um, was in need of a geologist on their project. So. Um, that's kind of how I transitioned into the industry. And um, so it's been a huge uh, passion for me. I, I enjoy all the people and I enjoy um, creating awareness in the industry because it's not something I ever knew I was going to get into. Um, and so I kind of like fell into it, I guess. Um, so, yeah. That's awesome. And, and, that, and then so that's how I transitioned to Keller, right? Mm -hmm. I, I stayed the geotechnical path. Awesome. Is there anybody that inspired you to, to pursue the path? Are you true? I mean, you say you fell into it, but did you see anybody that did this before? Or are you really just like, Hey, I'm here. No, I, no, I really, I really didn't. But um, as I was getting into it, I was exposed to it more. Um, I, I followed a lot on LinkedIn and social media and did some more research. So um, I just like enjoy the diversity of the construction industry, but especially the geotechnical side of it. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I love that you're paying it forward, which we'll talk about in a little bit as far as providing opportunities for others to learn more about it. So right. when I look at your career, you're not just a successful professional, but you're also a devoted mother. So right. how do you manage the demands of your career while also being a mom? 
of I believe two it's two two young daughters, right? Yeah, I have two girls, a two year old okay. and a three year old. Um, nice. <laughs> so it's uh, it definitely presents their challenges there, right? Uh, okay. And um, it, it's just a balancing act, you know. What are, you know, being a mother and also in construction, it's uh, it's a wild ride. So. Um, you know, I think both jobs are hard. It's no joke. Um, but I became a mother during the pandemic. Okay. So another weird time, right? Yeah. So, um, okay. blessing and a curse, right? Uh, so we had my maternity leave that transitioned right to working from home. So <laughs> I, I got, so I got a little extended uh, maternity leave, I guess you could say, um, <laughs> which I enjoyed of course, but it, it definitely opened the door to that more flexible work-life balance, um, and such. So, um, so yeah, that's cool. So we all took time off with you basically. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have right. any tips for, uh, for working parents? Uh, we got teens at home, so it's a whole nother experience, but, uh, yeah. Do you have any, any, uh, tips for working parents in a construction industry? I mean, what, what are some, cause I, know I feel like I'm, yeah, I feel start, like I'm, <laughs> we start early and I like, how's that, how's that work? Like any, any tips yeah. you're, you're uh, on the front end of it, but any tips, <laughs> right. There's challenges. I don't know if I have tips. Like it's, it's, yeah. um, it's challenging every day. Like, you know, just this morning, my, you know, we don't work the typical nine to five jobs. Right. So, you know, just this morning, my daughter, both daughters are sick. Um, so, oh. you know, they're clinging on to me, they're screaming, they're crying. And, you know, I, you know, it's a good tip is having a supportive um, partner right at home that can uh, help the balance that. Right. So my husband's at home today and uh, helping That's to right. take care of the children. So, you know, to meet the demands of our industry, which is it, it's demanding, right? It takes a lot of dedication. There's a lot of time that you're away from home. Um, being able to have a good support system um, and also having uh, an employer that can support that work-life balance is um, paramount, you know, for the industry. That's great. That's great. And, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. After the pandemic, or actually during the pandemic, and now we're on the other side of the pandemic, right? It's, um, you know, we do talk a lot more about wellness and well-being mm -hmm. and work-life balance. People have been asking for that for a very long time. We're now at the point where right. we're <laughs> considering it <laughs> and trying yeah. it. But no, it's it's important because as as parents, it's it's if you have to be a job site at seven o'clock and daycare doesn't open until, open until seven. right? It's like right. How do you do that? So you're starting you the day with the challenge, right? right? <laughs> I don't have the answers, right? I yeah. don't have all the answers, but I can present. I can present the problems, right? Yes. And so we could work towards making it more sustainable for those women to come into the industry and understand how to tackle those challenges. And you know, I, I think I got stuck on once I had children is like the time. Like your time is how you manage your time. You know, they're my priority. Everything changed when I became a mother. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think now I only have two hours a day with them. You know, yeah. it's by the time I get home to by the time they go to bed, there's two hours a day. That's all you get with them. So, yeah. you know, time is important. And so, uh, you know, being able to, again, have a supportive work-life balance is, is just critical um, for, I feel like, people's mental health and, and for their families. That's great. Well, thank you so much for that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I understand you also have a passion for mentoring young engineers and STEM students. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, yeah. What motivates you to be a mentor and, and how do you approach mentoring to make it a lasting impact for those individuals' careers? Like what, what are some of the things you're doing? Um, so I, I think it's the most rewarding part of you know, besides the work being put in place, um, is just mentoring those students um, coming out of high school or college and seeing them succeed and like developing that confidence, um, whether it's in the office or on a job site is just so rewarding. Um, I, I just, I enjoy going to the career fairs every year and seeing, seeing the students and seeing, you know, what companies they're working for, what projects they're on and um, it, it's exciting. It's an exciting time and especially exciting time to get into the industry, right? You know, there's so many opportunities, you know, and um, so just seeing them succeed, uh, seeing my um, co-ops that I've had in the past, like um, be recognized for achievements in their career is exciting as well. So um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great time to get into, into the industry and I like supporting and mentoring um, those individuals as well through that process. That's great. I'm, I'm sure someone somewhere 
more than one someone is saying that they're in this industry because of the work that you're doing. So thank you for that. And uh, uh, let's see. So NAWIC, the National Association of Women in Construction, that's an important uh, organization in your life, from what I understand. Can you elaborate more about the mission and also how they're advocating or how you all are advocating for women professionals in the construction industry? Yeah, so the National Association of Women in Construction, NAWIC, um, I'm part of the Akron chapter, so chapter 124, and I'm the oncoming president this year. So um, really, it's just a, a professional organization that helps support women in the workplace. Um, it facilitates leadership training. We do a lot of professional development, uh, a lot of educational opportunities. Um, we partner with other local organizations and just really strengthen and amplify the success of women um, in making the industry a more safer, a more productive place to work um, by providing that support and that network um, for the industry. So, Okay. And, and when you think of the members, is it mostly women in the trades? Is it women in consulting? Is it yes. you know, specialty mm-hmm. contract? Because you're a specialty contractor. Like what is, who, who is there? Who is there? Yeah, we have a, we have a good, uh, so our group is small. I mean, one of the main goals that I have is to grow our uh, Akron group. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have a little bit of everybody. We have um, a couple architects, we okay. have engineers, project managers. Um, we have uh, people in the, um, accounting side as well and the administration side um so we got we got a pretty good diverse wide range of um people in our group um so so yeah it's good it's good to have that diverse range but i also like including men in our conversations or if we have um any like big events or speakers because you know they're 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 just as much part of the conversation Mm -hmm. too so I agree. Allyship is is key. Allyship is key. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look in and see what it, you all are doing. See if there's a way we can contribute. Um, and so now you're the president, right? You're the president. Uh, what are some of the initiatives or the goals that you have for the organization, especially as it from you know, especially we talk about promoting diversity and inclusion in the construction mm-hmm. field. Uh, so I have a, I think I have a lot of goals. Number one is trying to grow our group, right? So we okay. can do more. Um, uh, another goal is doing more outreach. Um, and so whether that's high school, middle school, um, in the local colleges, supporting them, um, we do a lot of, uh, we give a trade scholarship and a, um, a college scholarship every year to two individuals, um, that, so, you know, just networking and creating that advocacy, but advocacy with action, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and just supporting, um, our industry and our uh, members as much as I can and trying to make it a, uh, a, an organization that they want to come to, you know, everybody's time is valuable, like I said, right. So, um, you know, we're, we're going through the process of doing the strategic planning for this year and, you know, doing that community service, doing the job site tours, getting those speakers that can um, relate to our, our members and making it so it's like impactful and not just, you know, um, a, a whining or bitch session with a, you know, <laughs> a, at a bar, you know, so it, you know, yeah. I want it to be a valuable time for everybody. That's great. Now you're, you're, uh, you're, you're making changes that'll have lasting impacts, not just for now, but generations to come. So that's, that's, that's really powerful. So congratulations. Being the Thank, president. You. Thank you. Um, now, when you look at the construction industry, what types of changes are you seeing as it relates to inclusivity and providing more opportunities for female professionals? And also, what are some actions you think that the industry should be taking to welcome more people and also make it more equitable? What, is, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, so I, I guess I'll highlight too with that NAWIC and tying in with this question is, you know, we, this past summer, um, I organized and produced uh, a fashion show, it was a construction safety workwear fashion show. Um, so a lot of our local industry companies um, helped support the event. We had models, we had 30 or so models that um, representation from each different company, um, different sectors of the industry as well. Um, and that really just highlighted um, creating that culture of inclusivity with um, workwear for females. Um, so um, with like the safety vest, having women's vest, having a hard hat that's for women, um, providing the boots and just really highlighting the brands that are stepping up and, um, creating those, um, 
the, the attire, I guess, for women in the workplace. Um, it, and so, um, you know, I just started at Keller and, uh, right, you know, right, right off the bat, and maybe it's because I did the fashion show, you know, they had the, uh, they had the women's workwear vest for me. They had the hard hat, um, and all those things. So it just makes you feel included, makes you feel more welcome. Um, so some initiatives, you know, that I, in my past that I've seen with companies that have, you know, impressed me or to help retain and attract talent, um, is, you know, it starts from the onboarding process. Um, you know, when you, when you get and show up to work, like making sure you have the tools to, to succeed, right. Um, it's, it's the trainings that they give you the investment that they make in you and your professional development. Um, you know, do they give you all the, you know, safety training? Is there a safety focus? You know, I, I can tell you, I don't want to work for a company if there's not a good safety culture and yeah. there's not a good, you know, and, and most people wouldn't, right. So be, to be able to attract and retain those people, um, the people that are investing in the training up front, like you can, you, it's, it's obvious and you can tell um, who's set up for success in the future. That's so true. I mean, when you think about construction, construction is definitely, if not, is one of the most dangerous fields of, of practice, right? Um, right? And if you say that, okay, I want you to, to work here. And if you don't have a safety culture that there's nothing attractive about that yeah, no. <laughs> at all. No. And I, you know, I didn't even know there was, uh, there's, you know, harnesses that are made just specifically for women, right? So, you know, it's a lot of it is just educating uh, people because of the ignorance and it's not, um, they just might not know. I don't even know when I'm a female, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so. And I think that, I, I think that a good part of the culture is when you, when, when something is, when something's brought to light, you say, all right, well, let's look into this and let's do something. Like I can remember, right. um, I, I had staff that, you know, females, I, it got to the point where I think my group was like more than 50% female. And they're like, what's going on with these safety vests? And I, I just didn't, I didn't even think about it. Right. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so you have to make the investment. You do the research to make the investment and make right. sure that you have the P I mean, this is personal protective equipment, right? So we're not even talking right. about just style. It's like, you may not be protecting people appropriately if things right. don't fit the way they're supposed to fit so um so that's yeah. cool that you did the fashion show you think that's gonna be an annual thing or that, that's, that's I, I don't know cool. what we'll do we'll, we'll definitely mm -hmm. probably try to do i don't know if we're going to do it as big we had we mm -hmm. pray we had over 200 people attend uh wow. it, it was it was well attended and well received people are really excited to do it yeah. again um but yeah i don't know i don't know what's in store yet we're uh, still trying to figure that out okay so. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So um, outreach and education, these are also uh, important aspects if we want to change uh, the negative narratives that are surrounding the construction industry. Uh, what are some of the things that you're doing from an outreach uh, outreach standpoint and also initiative standpoint um, that's focusing on those that are coming into the industry? Like, I think you're looking at things at the middle school and high school, but what are some of the things you're you're, you're doing there? You know, any opportunity I can get to get into like middle schools or high schools and have those early conversations with um, those students, uh, you know, I think are critical. And I try to make time for that because, um, you know, I, per I participated in, um, you know, Girl Up. I've participated in Block Kids. I'm trying to think any like wood or construction classes uh, just to create that conversation and open up the dialogue. Um, and I think it's especially important to have a female go there as well so that um, the women can see um, what they can be, right? So um, I, I, uh, I, anytime I can get into those schools, I do um, because construction's vital. It's, you know, our world revolves around construction. Yeah. Um, and it does, it has a negative narrative to it that I think is so huge that I think we need to change. And that's part of the goal of NAWIC and my presidency. Like, I really want to change that narrative because when you think of construction, you know, what do you think of? Like, you know, a construction worker, you think of, you know, middle-aged white guy, you know, dirty, um, you know, and, and that's not the case, right? That's not the case at all. But, you know, so changing that narrative and that stereotype and like showing them what the opportunities are available and, you know, what their careers could look like um, and that you don't have to go to school, you can go to college or the trade route. Um, and so um, I, I think just opening up that conversation is huge. Um, and I think I came from a high school that um, it was 
you know, academics were top, right? 98% of people that graduated there went on to four-year degrees, you know, um, construction wasn't really in the vocabulary. And I think mm -hmm. it was um, a career of like last resort, right? Wow. So, um, you know, oh, once you've like failed and you can't make it in these academic academically, mm -hmm. oh, maybe here's construction or, you know, so, wow. which is not the case. And I feel like, and I still feel like that's, that's how it's perceived a little bit. So um, just changing that narrative that, that we're very highly skilled yeah. um, workers um, and they're dedicated individuals um, and not everyone can do it. Um, so I think that's important to, uh, to stress in the schools, mm -hmm. but even like taking it one step further, you know, if your parents, if the, those parents don't understand and they're not educated on the industry, mm -hmm they're not going to say, yeah, go, you know, go do construction, right? You know, yeah. that's not going to be their top um, choice. So just educating the parents, I think is huge as well to let them know that what the career options are, the opportunities um, and the advancements that are, are in the industry. Cause there's, there's, it's just such a cool career path. And yeah. I, I just love, um, I'm passionate about talking about it because not, not a lot of people show off their industry and yeah. like what they're doing. Um, and so, um, yeah, I just think that, I think that's important to uh, get into the middle schools and high schoolers and also talk to their parents and the counselors. You know, you, 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 you make some really good points there, Christina. The, the reality is that there is, yeah. When people think about construct, Oh, I'm going into the trade, I'm going to construction. It's like, is a negative connotation, but the reality is that there's so much sophistication in the work that y'all are doing, right? I mean, right. it's like what when so you're a Keller, right? So when a Keller rig shows up and you're talking about what it takes to to get this element into you know 100 feet into the ground, it's like right. That's no small feat, right? No, no, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I think that you're right. There's a lot that has to happen. I didn't even think about that from the parents' side. There's a lot of education and re-education has to happen the parent side. So if your child does say they want to go into construction, it's not like, oh no, right? It's like, you don't have to have a briefcase. You don't have to have a right. suit to go to work. Right. I mean, it's like all the infrastructure we're talking about that we depend right. on, it needs to be done by skilled labor. It needs to be done by specialty contractors. So right. this is something that should be celebrated and not frowned upon. Celebrated. <laughs> and they're and they're in their high paying roles, right? Like, high paying roles. <laughs> I think that was the biggest surprise to me too. Is I'm like, how much are we like? How much you know? Like they're high paying roles, right? And and um, yeah. and it's so it's critical. And we're, we're after the pandemic, right? We're essential mm -hmm. workers. Like yep. we can't we can't live without construction workers. Yeah. And it's 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 like a dying breed. I think it. I saw a statistic. It's uh, for every four um, boomers that retire only once coming into the industry or, you wow. know, so, so, you know, that's, that's huge. That, that's something that, uh, the economy is going to need in order to, um, be progressive. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and part of that is, you know, targeting the 50% of population of women. Right. Yeah. So we're only, yeah. we're only 10% of the industry <laughs> less if we even like, if we take out all the administration and the office roles, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, there's, so much potential if we could tap into the the women and, and yeah. get them involved and and let them know that this is a viable career path for them um so it'll it's important okay well, it's a great opportunity there for for opening the eyes and i know that <laughs> when i've when i've come to speak to like the middle school age when i've come to speak to middle schools it's like you know, you can put the PowerPoint up, you can show some pictures, but when you bring a hard hat, boots and vest, sometimes that's, or, or a rock core, it's like, they're, they're swooned, right? It's like, all right, what right. do they do? I want to do what they're doing, right? Right, right. It's very tangible. It's very tangible. Right. All right, cool. So what, what are some of the key, we handed on some of this, but what are some of the key challenges that the women still face in the construction industry today? And how can we work together to overcome some of these challenges? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's always challenges, and I think it's for men and women, right? Yep. Um, safety is always a big uh, a big thing because it's a dangerous place that we work in. Um, so, um, you know, it ranks highest by total of number of fatalities for work injuries. So, you know, your company as a group of female workers, make sure that they have the right PPE, the safety equipment, developing the more um, effective approach to solving safety issues. Um, and so 
there's that component of safety and those challenges faced there. Um, but I think another huge part is um, is child care or yeah. uh, being a being a caregiver, right? So it's not just being a mother in construction. It's you know there's other you know, sometimes you're taking care of your um, parents, right? Your elderly or sick parents. So it, it's just um, supporting the caretakers that you yeah. uh, employees are. I think that's huge. And so um, that that's an important thing, but also, you know, stomping out those stereotypes that I've talked about, mm-hmm. um, changing that narrative, you know, I, you know, I want all, anybody that I work with I want them to be able to say, yes, I want my kids to uh, pursue this career, right? If someone yeah. goes, oh God, I don't, I wouldn't want my daughter doing that job. Like, <laughs> then it's, then it's like eye opening. It's like, why not? Like, yeah. why can't we make a work environment that is yeah. conducive to everyone, right? So, yeah. um, and I think that, that, that's the point right there. We need to make a, a work environment that everyone is excited to go to work and um, contribute. So, yeah. Well said, well said. And just stay on this a little bit. You know, we talk about the construction culture and and how to improve it. It's a shared goal for many. I mean, I, I know a lot of folks yeah. when they responded to, uh, you know, an RFP, they're talking about, you know, their um, metrics for safety, right? Like a lot of times, you know, days without an injury, like this is something we're all trying to I- improve the industry. But in your opinion, what are some of the steps that organizations and individuals can take to create a more inclusive and supportive work environment for everyone in the industry. Yeah, and I think I kind of hit on this a little bit too in the last question, but um, I think it all starts with the first impression um, for your culture of your company. Like what's important to you? Where are your core values? Is is it safety, is integrity? Um, Do you offer that training, that continuous learning? Um, How are you supporting um, your employees, right? And and who are those mentors and those leaders? Are they being supported? Do are they given the proper training and the tools to um, help the team succeed? Um, so flexibility, I, I, you know, I think I still go back to it's, it's huge, right? You know, mm-hmm. um, so no, it's good. I, I was um, I'm trying to think of what organization it might have been. It might have been. Um... I think it was Women in Deep Foundations, so Deep Foundations Institute. They had a summit on on mental health. They were yeah. talking about um, suicide prevention in construction, right. and not mm-hmm. something we talk about a lot. But um, I'm finding that there are a lot of conversations that are happening to kind of change this narrative of what happens, in, and not just a narrative, change the trends that are happening in construction. Right. So, so thank you for being a part of what what you're doing. And before we take our break, when you look ahead, what are some of your personal and professional goals? Uh, as it relates to the geotechnical construction field and how do you plan to continue to make a difference in the industry and also within NAWIC? Um, so, you know, I think my goal is just consistency right now is just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, cre- creating that outreach, helping support um, and mentor individuals coming up in the industry, um, you know, foster that culture of inclusivity, um, help them and advance them in their leadership roles. Um, so, and just creating that awareness for uh, the construction industry. Great, great, great. All right, so we're going to come back in just a minute and close this one out with Christina and our Career Factor Safety End segment. Stick around. Before we go on here, I would like to take a minute to recognize our other sponsor for this episode, Menard USA. Menard USA is a specialty ground improvement contractor that works nationally, providing design-build ground improvement solutions at sites with problematic soils. Menard works closely with civil, structural, and geotechnical engineers to minimize foundation costs for wide ranges of soil conditions, structure types, and loading conditions. To learn more about Menard USA or for help on your next project, please visit www.menardusa.com. Dot com. All right, welcome back. It's time for our career factor safety in segment. In geotechnical engineering, just like many disciplines of engineering, it's important to incorporate a factor of safety into your design. But what about incorporating a factor of safety into your career? Today, of course, we're here speaking with Christina McDonald of Keller. Now, Christina, you've had a very successful career. And when you look back on your career, what's something that you've implemented in your career to give yourself, let's call it a factor of safety in your career? Um, you know, I, I say I bring my true authentic self, you know, I never tried to fit in, especially being a woman. Um, I, I just was always myself. Right. Um, and with that, uh, I also, you know, found a mentor, right. 
um, in the industry or who, whoever I was working with, someone who, a uh, core group of individuals that can support your growth, um, that push me, mentor me, challenge me, um, include me in on conferences or networking events. Um, just so sure you surround yourself with people who are smart, respectful leaders, um, so you can communicate your goals, um, get where you want to, um, and be coached. Uh, so getting a strong mentor and also being a good mentor, I think, uh, was a, a factor of safety that I've kept in my career to help get me ahead. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. I love it that, um, you know, you, you talk about mentoring, but then you're also a mentor as well. I, I, I think that that's just so awesome for the people that are listening and watching. Well, Christina, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you shared some really good insights with us and we gained some great information. It's going to be helpful for those that are listening, those that are watching. Uh, how can people reach you? Uh, do you have an email you want to share? Are you on social media? We can get that in the, in the show notes. Yeah, uh, I am on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. We have uh, Instagram. We have Akron, May Akron Maywick on Instagram um, and Facebook and all the social media platforms. Um, and it's christina.mcdonald at keller north america.com excellent excellent we'll get that in the show notes thank you so much for coming on this is awesome yeah absolutely thanks i hope you enjoyed the episode today we would love to hear your feedback comments and or questions please feel free to go to geotechnicalengineeringpodcast.com where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode that being episode 87 as well as links to any of the resources websites or books mentioned during this episode until next time, we wish you the very best in all of your geotechnical engineering endeavors. Peace.